Coach Beamer was in here talking, and he said point blank that this was your team. Um, how do you feel about that? And how does that affect your mentality going in? And then I guess for the younger players after that, Trey, if you could just talk a little bit about um, you know that mentality as well, knowing that you know your your leader is your quarterback going into his senior year. Uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. That's kind of what is, I expected, what everybody expects out of a quarterback. And um, I'm just thrilled to have the opportunity to be able to do so. Uh, playing alongside of these guys, it's uh, it's been an honor my my last or my first four years, and then obviously I'm I'm thrilled to, and excited to see what happens uh, once we start the season this year. Um, first and foremost, being a young guy, having a leader who's been there and having a leader who's experienced everything and know most of the obstacles that can be faced as a football player, just being able to play behind them is great, and uh, it's thrilled and it's exciting. Logan, Frank was in here talking, and he talked about a lot of the question marks, positions that are still unsettled. Not, not that there's not talent, but you know the rotations and stuff. How, how far along do you guys feel you are, not only in in installing and knowing the offense, the the whole offense, but in determining who the guys are that you're going to be looking to make plays with? Uh, I guess that's why we have two more weeks of camp left. Um, for right now, I mean, everybody's just working to keep getting better and keep keep pushing each other. And uh, I don't think anything has to be set in stone right yet. I think we just need guys to keep forcing each other to get better. Uh, and then down the road, they'll let you know, know they'll they'll filter themselves out, and, and somebody will emerge as the number one go-to guy. Uh, for Trey and JC, where do you guys see your competition right now at running back? And how do you think ultimately it shakes out in terms of will you rotate series? Do you think one guy will get two or three series, and the other guy spells him? What do you think the plan is, and how has it gone so far? Um, right now, we're just taking it day by day, and uh, we're both working hard as well as the other running backs. And um, that's for the coaches to determine. You know, that's not nothing that that we're here to really think about. We're just going out there and doing our job, and whatever the coaches say, then that's what we're gonna do. So, um, I feel like everyone in the running back room is able to come out and make exceptional plays. I feel we all work hard and practice every day, and we all get after it, and we all push each other, and we help each other learn. So. Uh, like JC said, I feel that we should just leave it in the coach's hand and let's just control the things we can control. Like between last season and next season, I mean, it, you've had some time to kind of digest what seven and six record means in the big picture. I mean, what what do you think of when you think of seven and six? I mean, is that a hiccup? Is that a wake up call? What it, what is the last year? We have to play with a chip on our shoulders. We've been working all summer because that is unacceptable in any means. And that's what we've been working for all summer, to get better. So let's not let that happen again. Logan, uh, this isn't meant to be a, an indictment at all about your former quarterback coach. But I wonder, have you, do you feel like you've taken on the personality of Scott? You mentioned you were you know, a little meaner this offseason. Do you think part of that is just Scott is a really intense guy? Uh, I wouldn't say that's really the reason why. Uh, I just kind of realized that it's time to step up. Um, obviously, I think he was just kind of a extra motivation to start doing so. And um, but I wouldn't say I didn't ever have it in me until he showed up. But um, he definitely, you know, something that kind of kick started the whole thing. What's been his impact on you specifically? Would you say the biggest thing he's really impacted? Uh, I don't think there's really one thing that uh, impacts that he's impacted me over another. Um, you know, the mental, physical aspects, probably 50-50. And, um, you know, just, you know, it's been a blessing to have him thus far. And uh, like I said earlier, just excited to get the season started because that's when things start coming together. Once again, we ask that you ask the follow-up questions into the microphone. Far side. Andrew Miller, uh, the down here, the offense seems to start and end always with the offensive line. So this year compared to last year, are you guys better entering the uh, last couple of weeks of camp? Absolutely. We've uh, been practicing all summer, every day, lifting hard every day, and making huge strides on the field. And we continue to do so over the next two weeks. Andrew, it seems like there's been a lot of shuffling on the offensive line since the spring. What do you guys think of that as, as players? And is there a point where you think you kind of have to be in a spot to get used to who's playing around you? Well, I think it's good because it adds a sense of competitiveness. And uh, 
everybody's fighting for a job, so nobody's getting lax days of school on each other. So it's really just pushing each and every one of us for that starting job. Uh, to ask you about the move. You know, you moved from from, uh, from center. Uh, well, what's that move been like so far for me, uh, for you? And then you know the constant shuffling you guys have kind of done. How do you feel like that's affected kind of the rest of the offensive linemen? You know, moving around so much to find that spot where you guys fit the best. You know, it's not where we want to play usually. It's uh, where we fit the best for the team, and that's what you really have to look at. You know, guard has been it's a very familiar position for me. I played it in high school. I played it here my freshman year, redshirt freshman year as well. So uh, it's just wherever I fit best for the team to be as best we can be together. Logan, can you uh, – Kind of talk about your receivers. You have DJ back off injury, and then a bunch of guys who really aren't that experienced. Um, what do you see from that supporting group? Uh, you know, I, uh, I've said all along that those guys be push, are pushing each other as hard as they can, and um, you know, I think I think we got a, a good solid f five six that we know that are kind of kind of going to be our guys. But uh, you know, we need those guys to keep fighting for for a spot to be number one on the depth chart, and uh, I think that's the most important thing is just how much we how much we get better from now until uh, the end of camp, and then that next that next week because you know uh, we. I mean, the receivers are the ones that paint the picture and make the plays. And, uh, you know, we got to have those guys step up and make big plays when the time comes. Coach Leffler and Coach Moore had mentioned the being unhappy with the consistency catching the ball. How frustrating was it last year to have some of those drops? And, and do you think this group will be better with that? Uh, drops are always frustrating. Um, you know, it, it, sometimes it just it just happens. I mean, it's, it's a fact of football. There's going to be drops. Um, but... <laughs> You know, th things happen, and, and for this year's crew, um, you know, obviously we haven't gotten any to, into any game-like situations, um, so everything changes when that when that comes around. So I guess we'll see when that time comes. Andrew, if if the depth chart holds as it is, which I understand is is not a given, John McLaughlin would be the first true freshman left tackle to start an opener for Frank Beamer. What have been your impressions of him thus far in camp, and why do you think he's risen to number one there? I really can't speak about the depth charts because you'd have to ask Coach Scrum, but he, John is a great player. He has great athleticism, natural ability to play football, and uh, I know he's been working hard this summer, and if it comes to it, I think he'd be a good left tackle when he does play. Andrew, how would you characterize this defensive line that you, you block every day? Obviously, they look like on paper they should. Yes, sir. They are one of the strengths of the defense. Uh, they're a group of guys that have played before. They're all experienced, and uh, I look forward to seeing what they could do this year. JC, how are you different this year than last, and how much did playing some last year kind of push you along and, and let you see what you need to get better at? Um, I'm definitely stronger, you know, coming into this year. I put an emphasis on um, getting stronger throughout the um, summer, and uh, I, I accomplished that goal. And um, something that I wanted to do was was make Super Iron Hokey. I finally made that. And um, that's just something that I, that I worked on. And I also um, worked on, you know, catching routes out of the backfield. Um, just mostly overall, I just had to get stronger from last year, you know. Um, and I happen, I realized I have to break tackles, a few more tackles this year as well. So that's something that that being stronger will help me do. And um, that's pretty much it. Logan, you're a little bit lighter than you were last year. Is that on purpose, and and why? Uh, I just needed to be in better shape. Um, I got to be able to do, you know, go the full game without getting tired, no matter the circumstance. Um, and I guess that's the big reason why. Uh, and that's that's it. Last question, Dennis, in the back of the room. Hey, Trey, uh, can you talk about your first week of camp? How do you feel like you've done? What do you need to do better as we move on towards Alabama? Um, I feel like the first week of camp has been great. Uh, guys have been flying around both offense and defense. I feel like we accomplished a lot of things. Uh, guys are out there learning. We're out there competing, and that's the most important thing, and just getting better as an individual, I mean, as a team. So, I mean, uh, we still have two weeks left in camp and still have a week to prepare for Alabama. So hopefully we keep striding. The team just gets better. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thanks. We'll start with Mike. Scott, we heard you out on the practice field um, emphasizing consistency, catching the football for your receivers. What have you seen from that group? And, and 
what can you do to make guys catch the ball more consistently? Well, uh, I think for the most part, we have caught the ball much better this training camp. However, we got to continue uh, to eliminate the drops. Uh, we're, uh, we're making progress in that direction. The positive thing, and uh, we said this today, our young wide receivers are getting open. Now we just got to at times finish the plays on a more consistent basis. And uh, I'm really happy with that group in terms of their technique and ability to get open. And I think we need to improve in the next two weeks on just the consistency of uh, catching the ball. Drops are going to happen. Missed throws are going to happen. But uh, as coaches and as an offensive unit, we're trying to be perfect. And uh, at the end of the day, that's not going to be possible. But we're going to try to, uh, to accomplish that goal. Scott, you gave Logan kind of a crash course before spring and through spring and kind of gave him a homework for the summer kind of stuff. Um, how far, and, and, I, and I know out your office window you could see how some of that stuff was going, but how is he different and how much is he what you kind of targeted him to be, um, you know, coming back? I think it um, started out a little slow at the first couple of days. Um, I'm really happy where he's going and where he's going to be. Um, I think the guy has uh, got all the intangibles. I think he's got all the physical traits. Uh, he's becoming extremely aggressive. Um, he's being decisive. And uh, at the end of the day, when you're aggressive and you're decisive and you know what to do, you're an older guy. Um, like Coach Beamer said earlier, um, this is his team. And uh, we need him to do all the things that he needs to do. It doesn't mean he needs to go outside the box and be Superman. The minute you try to be Superman is whenever you press and you try to make mis uh, mistakes occur because you're pressing and trying to do too much. He needs to do his job. And um, that's what we're focusing on. But uh, I thought uh, in practice four and five, I saw exactly what I envisioned um, him being and where he's going to go. Coach was also in here talking about how there's still unsettled positions. There's you know lots of people competing. At this point, is that a good thing, or would you prefer to have guys having already stepped forward and said, this is my job? Yeah, I think uh, that's a great question. Uh, I think you'd always love to have that veteran group coming back. Uh, at some positions, we do have that, and at others, we don't. Um, I think as a coach, uh, I think as an offensive staff, I think it's really, really challenging and really fun. Uh, we get to take some guys at certain positions and mold them and get them to where they need to be. Uh, is it going to happen overnight? No. Do we want it to happen overnight? Yes. Uh, but uh, it's going to be a process at some, with some guys. And uh, that's why it's really, really important that our older guys that have been there in the fray and uh, that have kind of done it uh, play well. Scott, because of just a, a guy's local for us, um, have you been surprised at all with what you've seen from, from Deion Newsom, or is it more a situation because of depth issues at receiver? You, you have to put him out there, and you have to see what he offers. And if, if, he's, if he's impressed you, is he one of those guys that maybe could contribute as a true freshman? Yeah, that's. Uh, I think uh, just watching uh, the Newsom, Newsom is a, a very good young player. And uh, to say that we're, we're giving everyone reps right now at that position. So I don't know if we can just single out him right now. I mean, he's getting a lot of snaps, but it, they're all getting a lot of snaps right now. So, so to single him out right now, I don't know if that's fair. But he's having a good camp. Scott, you've known Logan for about eight months now. Is anything struck you as surprising about him from maybe what your first impressions were when, when you met him? No, I yeah. wish to goodness that I could coach him the rest of my career, to say the least. I love being around him. Um, he's competitive. Uh, I think his leadership uh, has really, really improved. And um, I, I just really, really enjoy working with him. He's, uh, he's fun, to fun to be in the meeting rooms. He knows uh, when it's business. He also has a great personality to settle me down at times. <laughs> but uh, uh, I absolutely uh, really, really enjoy working with him. He's, uh, he's a delight. He's got a couple of uh guys that are moving or on the move. Carlos Parker, uh, we saw get bumped up on the depth chart. Why did that happen? What does he bring? And Joel Caleb, talk about that position move and the thinking mm -hmm. behind that. Carlos is, uh, when you watched his high school tape, uh, you saw the athleticism, you saw the explosion. He's a tall six foot three, a uh, little under, I believe, 200 pounds. And uh, uh, he's a guy that's very, very raw. He's a guy that needs a bunch of reps. 
Um, the more he gets in there, the better he's going to be. And uh, I, we expect uh, for him to develop over uh, the next couple weeks, continue to develop during the season. And um, I, I enjoy being around him also. He's a competitive guy. Coach, coming from the SEC, I've got to ask you, how does this program in Blacksburg compare to the SEC programs? Uh, I've only been here for eight months, and I was only in the SEC two years at Florida, a year at, uh, at uh, Auburn. Um, spent the majority of my life in the Big Ten. And uh, the way that, uh, that I looked at the Virginia Tech job and the, the way that I've always looked at Virginia Tech from an outsider looking in, it's one of the best programs in America. What this place has done over the years is remarkable. Uh, Any time that you win 10 ball games, eight straight years, that's uh, no one in the country has done that. Alabama hasn't done that. Georgia hasn't done that. Michigan, Ohio State, et cetera, et cetera, USC. Uh, and any time that, uh, uh, that you do what they've done here, it's one of the best programs in the country. They graduate people. Uh, they care about people. They do things the right way, and they win. And uh, for, for Coach Beamer and the rest of the staff to do what they've done over the 20 some odd years that Coach has been here, it's remarkable. And the way that I look at it, it's an absolute privilege and an honor, and I feel extremely responsible to, uh, to help that uh, continue. When you have a kid like Parker, like you said, who's raw but has lots of ability and, and stuff, is receiver a position where you can kind of force it along and put him in the game, um, you know, just kind of get him more reps in a game? Is, is yeah, uh, Coach Beamer's always said this, and the numerous head coaches that I've worked for have said this, the farther you get away from the ball, the more chance a young guy has to play. That's why you don't see too many freshman starting quarterbacks. That's why you don't see too many freshman starting centers, uh, linebackers. The farther you get away from the football, uh, your job description becomes a somewhat easier. I'm not going to ever discredit and say a wide receiver position is easy because it's not. But uh, the farther you get away from the football, I think uh, um, those young guys, you, know, you see more young receivers and young DBs play than you do quarterbacks, linebackers, et cetera. Okay. Coach, appreciate it. Thank you.